So we will now go on to the next uh, section. And this is about Arjuna's prayer to see the universal divine form. So remember that uh, in uh, the last chapter, Bhagavan told him that this is only a bit of my yoga and my power. So Arjuna is saying, by this word of the highest secret concerning yourself, which you have spoken out of compassion towards me, my delusion is gone. So when we talk about delusion is gone, which means I can see clearly now. Why? Because what I was thinking was a reality is no longer there. And this is the reality which I am seeing now as real and therefore my delusion is gone. Of course, in the not delusion gone in the ultimate sense whereby he has got the experience of the ultimate reality whereby delusion is gone completely. Once and for all, it is gone completely. But what is happening here is that Arjuna is saying, now my delusion that you know the divine is not available to me here, or that I cannot see the divine in any kind of way, that the truth about what you are telling me, and the truth about the ultimate reality, the Nirguna Brahman, and the truth about the Saguna Brahman has actually been accepted by me and therefore my delusion is gone. So the first step of removing delusion is to have clarity and comprehension of knowledge. With that come, comes conviction. And with the conviction comes commitment. These are the four C's again. So in this case, Arjuna is saying, yes, my conviction is now steady. It is established and my delusion is gone. So, then he says, okay, the origin and destruction of being verily have been heard by me in detail from you. So Bhagavan has given a lot of detail about what the divine is in manifest, unmanifest form. And he says, your inexhaustible greatness. He's beginning to have this sense that Bhagwan's inexhaustible greatness has been described to him. And now he is just beginning to kind of grasp it. And then he says, as you have thus described yourself, I wish to see you actually, your form divine or Pushottama. So this is like if somebody is describing to me, um, you know, there's this wonderful chocolate concoction and this wonderful chocolate you can get from this country and it comes in this kind of wrapping and it is so wonderfully kind of tasty and just to have a bit of that is like experience of heaven. And this person is so good at describing this detail to me, what begins to happen to me? I begin to have my, uh, the, the water in my mouth begins to come about. My mouth starts watering because in my imagination, I am seeing this thing. It is now available to me in this kind of experience of listening to somebody. So if this person has given me such a nice detail and, and I've heard this in detail, what is the next thing I want to do? I want to experience that chocolate for myself. I'm a lover of chocolate and that's why I use this example because all different kinds of chocolates, just to taste it and to experience it is really what I want to do if somebody has explained to me, here's a new chocolate which has come onto the market. So in the same manner, Arjuna has listened to Bhagwan's, uh, you know, glories, vibhutis in the last chapter, he has given so many glories. And before that he has explained to him what divinity is, where does it arise from? What is the ultimate reality? What is the imperishable Brahman? And all this description makes Arjuna to be very kind of keen now to actually experience this. I wish to see actually your form divine. And this is where he says to the Lord, if you think it is possible for me to see it, please, O Lord of the Yoga, Yogeshwara, show me your imperishable self form. So Arjuna has reached a point now Remember, he was in a state of dejection. From dejection, he has now come to 
so much kind of enthusiasm and this energy which is beginning to now flow itself out and say, Lord, you have shown me and told me uh, so many things about, and I've heard it from you in detail, about all these things of the divine. Now I want to see it. Let me see it, please. If you think it's possible, let me see it.